Hi guys, uh, we're Matt and Holly from Overland Travellers. Uh, we come to you in isolation in the, F the Flinders Ranges. Uh, we thought it'd be a really good opportunity to do a video you've all been asking for for a long time, uh, which is our gear and what gear we use to shoot and edit our videos. I'm Matt. And this is Holly. We've been traveling around Australia for the past 12 months in our old Toyotas going to some of the most incredible locations. Subscribe and join the adventure. So in this video, uh, we're just gonna talk about what gear we have, briefly how we use it, but I'm gonna set a whole video aside just for how to use the gear, how to get the most out of your gear on your big lap, on your travels, when you're touring. Specifically, if you're an amateur and you're thinking, what sort of camera do I get? What do I need? How do I do it? How do I make, you know, how do I make videos and how do I do photos like you guys? Well, I'm gonna leave that for a whole uh, other video because it obviously goes quite in depth for that. So yeah, this will just be a bit of a gear video and showing you what we use. All right, so first things first, Camera bag, so this is a, a Zecti. Is that, yeah, we just bought it from Amazon. Um, really happy with it. I can't remember how much it was because it was a Christmas present. I think but it was about a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't overly expensive and ever since we've had it, which has been you know a few months now, we have loved it. It is, yeah, it's been so good. It's so good to keep the cameras in something that is padded and they're secure before they were just sitting around in the ute and we would try and, you know, shove them between clothes and stuff. So mm. not and we had a few different bags. We put our gear in it. Just yeah. wasn't really good. So getting a dedicated camera bag, if you have a lot of gear, um, it's just worth it. Yeah. Mm. As Holly said, it's padded. It's got a weather seal um, or weather cover. Mm. Access is from the back. Yeah. And it's also got, um, if you go hiking with it, it's got the support braces around your waist and your chest. Um, yeah. So it's, it's actually just a really comfortable bag. Yeah. For the price. Well. Yeah. So... Yeah, all compartmentalised in there. You can change it around to how you like. It's accessed from the back as well, which is great. So if you're travelling maybe overseas, not that you'll be doing that for a while, but <laughs> if you're travelling overseas, you know, the only way to access it is, you know, from the back. So you have to take it off your back. So very secure. It's also got room for a laptop uh, in the front. So MacBooks in here. It's got pockets everywhere. Yeah, we love it. We'll mm. probably get another one. All right, so we're gonna get all the gear out of the bag now, lay it on the table and we'll start running through it. All right, so let's get into it. Obviously we're shooting on a camera, which I will get off and swap later, but we'll start with our B camera, which is this one here. So this is a Sony A6400. We actually got this in Tassie. Yeah, so about six weeks into the six trip. Six weeks into the trip. Mm. We were sort of wanting a bit more from our cameras and we had some older cameras and just weren't really cutting it for us with our hybrid shooting. So when I say that, photos and video. This just came out and I was really liking what Sony was doing with their hybrid shooting and I really liked sort of, you know, their mirrorless technology. So I decided to jump ship and get onto that. As you can see, very small little camera, really compact package, great to travel with. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking about getting into a uh, SLR camera um, or a mirrorless system, sorry, I could probably recommend the 6000 series from Sony. They're all really small, great little camera and they pack a lot of features. So this just, just does everything. And what does it do? 4K, 120 frames per second at 1080. Photo mode, I think it does 12 frames per second burst. Autofocus is ridiculous. It mm. has iron face track. It's even focused on flies as they fly past sometimes, <laughs> um, which is insane. Like they will fly past and it'll go do, 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 and focus on that, which is a bit sometimes annoying sometimes. Annoying, but, um... <laughs> but just goes to show how yeah. ridiculous it is. So I've teamed it up with the 16 to 70 f4 Zeiss Sony lens. So that has optical steady shot in it, so vibration reduction. This is not the kit lens. We bought this lens when we bought the camera. It's an, ex an ex expensive lens for a crop sensor camera, but it's a great little lens. 16, so it goes quite wide. 70, get quite a nice little zoom. So it sort of just does everything okay this camera i would mm. say i don't really want to change it the way it is we're not going to get any more lenses for it this is just a great all-rounder flip up screen Good um, vlogging if you don't have a mic on top things i don't like about this camera bad battery life mm. it doesn't have a headphone uh input if you want to check your audio levels and you just have to sort of look at what the camera is telling you but yeah shoot some picture profiles and we love this little camera um, it also doesn't have ibis which is yeah, in, in body stabilization. In stabilization, yeah. Mm. Which again, some people might want their videoing a lot, mm. but the lens does have stabilization, so that's fine. 
Uh, yeah, great little camera. So that is our, our B camera. All right, so we've swapped from our A camera to our B camera. It's probably why it looks a little bit different. Um, so, A camera. This thing is absolutely beautiful. We yeah. bought it halfway through the trip. It wasn't cheap. So this is a Sony A7 III. You might have heard of them before. They're a bit of a game changer in the industry. For the price, like they are expensive, but for the price, these things are incredible. Mm. They just do everything really well. Low light performance, 4K, 120p, 1080, you know, really high burst rate, 11 frames per second, I think it is. Uh, autofocus is ridiculous. Um, Ibis. Yep, Ibis. They're a full frame sensor, so just means uh, compared to this camera, which we're shooting on now, uh, which is a crop sensor, the sensor in this is larger. What are the advantages of that? Better in low light. Uh, there's a bit more information there, so photos and just images, video, everything just looks a little bit better. Mm. Um, bokeh is a bit more faded out. So yeah, they're definitely, they're beyond yeah amateur sort of setup, mm. amateur camera. They're sort of starting to get into your sort of prosumer sort of market, I would say. Unreal camera. We've got a Sony Zeiss uh, 16-35 to f4 on it. So this also has stabilization in it. I wanted, because we had a good standard zoom on the mm. 6400, we wanted a really good wide angle lens. So the 16 um, on the full frame sensor is really wide. Uh, great for landscapes, establishing shots, things like that is you know really nice as well. Uh, very sharp and going down to F4, it doesn't go down too low, not too fast, but um, it's still very usable, still find the bokeh is good. We can get some good B-roll out of it. Oh, we've got a uh, UV filter on the front, mainly just to protect the front element of the lens. Same deal with the 6400, we've got a little. All right, so moving on, uh, our other lens we have for our a7 III is the 50mm 1.8. So this is a prime lens, which means uh, it's fixed uh, focal length at 50, doesn't zoom. 1.8 aperture, so it's a fast lens. So essentially this is a really good uh, lens for low light. You're gonna get nice faded out backgrounds, creamy bokeh, people say. This lens is a cheap lens, it is a full frame lens. Cheap lens, it's not great, honestly. Not very sharp, yeah, just not sharp at all. Bad chromatic aberration, mm. it's tacky, a bit plasticky, but it was cheap, it's cheap prime, so yeah, I'm pretty keen to upgrade mm. uh, to some different primes later, but yeah, for now, it'll do, um, it's good for some B-roll, yeah, a few nice photos if you want that prime lens look. Alright, moving on, we've got our GoPro, I don't have to tell you about these things, why they're good. I will. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just quickly mention that, um, so we actually started filming all our vlogs on the GoPro. Mm. So we had a housing, which we don't have with us at the moment, it's in Armadale, um, which also had a, you put a mic on it, didn't you? So we had yeah. slightly better audio than just the GoPro audio, but it still wasn't great. Um, and then that's why we upgraded our cameras, because we wanted to get better footage and audio. Um, yeah, so this is, sorry, this is the GoPro Hero 6 mm -hmm. black, so it's a bit older now, a couple of years mm. old. It's not great in low light, uh, well it's not good at all in low light actually, <laughs> but in bright sunny situations, pitch is amazing. Mm. But yeah, I mean obviously you can go underwater with it, you can get really good slow-mo, you can stick it anywhere, you can get creative with it. We've got a mount on our snorkel on the ute, so it's mm -hmm. great for those outside shots, underwater, you know, like yeah. it looks great. So we don't use it a heap. We don't use it enough to warrant getting the seven or eight, which are a big jump up in, I think, just mm. in a few specs, like the stabilization on them is unreal. They're probably a really good little vlogging option if you can get really good audio out of them with a little road mic or something. So we've got heaps of little accessories and body mounts. And we also have a 50-50 underwater dome. So you can get like that really cool separation mm. of like the above and below water. Um, we'll put some photos up of what that looks like. All right, moving on to the drone. Yep. All right.
So the drone we have is uh, DJI Mavic Pro. So it's the old one, first gen uh, Mavic Pro. We got this years ago. Yeah, we've probably had it for about three years now. About three years. So mm. it's, it's getting old. Um, it's a pretty good life for a, a drone as most people crash them. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the most asked questions is what drone do you have? You know, tell us more about it because I think, I think people get drones and then they don't, quite get the most out of them. Mm -hmm. So this is old, I'm not too happy with the, like the footage doesn't look amazing uh, from it anymore compared to some of the newer ones. But I think drones, I'll have a little bit of a say about them. I think people, people are scared, a bit scared to fly them. It's a lot of money to be flying, you know, two grand to be flying around up in the air. There's a lot of things to go wrong. So a lot of people, they get drones and they just don't get them out. They say, oh, I don't want to crash it, which is just, which is insane. Mm. If you have a drone, you don't get it out and fly it. Just sell it. <laughs> mm. There's no point. It's just a lot of money to have sitting there. Look, you fly a drone enough, you're going to crash it. Mm. It's as simple as that. Um, one day you will crash. I have crashed this one, albeit a small one. What I like to think of a drone, a lot of people think of a drone as flying thing with a camera on it. What I think of it as a camera that happens to be able to fly. So first and foremost, it is a camera. When you're taking videos, if you treat it like I imagine it's on one of those booms, <laughs> you see, you know, the footy or something like that, or in movies, camera cranes. If you treat it like that as a as a camera crane, then you're gonna get good footage. Like what I mean by that is you want one continuous shot before it moves. It's just not fun to watch when you see people's drone videos and they're flying all over the place and they're really jittery and you sort of get a bit nauseous just sort of looking at it. So what you want to do is just one continuous movement and when you're editing, you just start at that movement and end at that movement when it's sort of, when you get a bit of movement out of it. So that's it. But I just think, just get it out, fly it, just get mm. used to it, get confident with it. You know, I've flown this thing in some pretty ridiculous situations like Cape Way and Tassie, like it was that windy, almost lost it. I fly it when we're driving along, uh, really enjoy those kind of shots, mm. but yeah, I just get it out a lot and just have a good crack with it. Yeah. So really good tool i love it for traveling yeah. yeah we find the mavic pro is good it's just a bit bigger than some of the small ones what I'm, mm. you know can fly a bit faster you know high wind situations which quite often in um, when you're traveling mm. around yeah. you know on, on, at the ocean you know around the ocean in australia you know it's windy quite often wa things like that so just a bit bigger drone yeah i, I do enjoy that if we would upgrade what would you want to get uh, for upgrade, I'll definitely go another Mavic Pro, Mavic mm -hmm. Pro 2. I think I think 3 will be coming out uh, in a few months or mm -hmm. next year or something. So probably wait until then. We don't have the cash to get another drone at the moment. This one's working fine. Yeah. So, yeah. Next thing we'll move on to is our sound equipment. It's definitely probably the most overlooked thing when it comes to videos is good quality sound. Sound design, it's huge. People say it's actually more important than the video. And in a sense, I suppose it is. Mm. If you've got bad audio, it's so distracting. You can't hear what people are saying. Look, you can pull your phone out of your pocket and you can get incredible footage these days, but sound is something else. So definitely investing in some sound gear. If you've got a little video camera for your family holidays or anything like that, uh, it, it definitely you know, pays for itself. So first little mic here is our, oh, look, it's from Audio Technica. Um, I don't actually really know what it, what it is. It's... It's a little shotgun mic um, that also picks up a bit of ambient noise as well. So it's not just pure directional shotgun where you point it where you're getting the audio. It also does a bit of the ambient noise, which is good when we're sort of out and about. Mm. You know, you want to get a bit of nature, a bit of that sea waves crashing or something like that. The noise is here, unreal. They're echoing off the, the canyon. I'll try and get the audio level right up so we can try and get some, some sound. Um, end of the day, it's it's just it's all right. It's a sixty dollar mic, so it's not not that great. Um, mm -hmm. The audio coming from it definitely better than the stock audio you get from your cameras. But yeah, we've been using this for ages, so that's that one. Uh, we usually have that. Well, we usually have that on our vlogging setup, so I'll mm -hmm. probably set that up later. Yeah, I'll set it up later and I'll show you what that looks like. The microphone we're using right now is this little one here. So this is the Rode. Uh, Video Wireless Go. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome little mic. So it's uh, wireless. So you've got the transmitter and the camera. And obviously we've got the mic here. Mm -hmm. You can clip it to a shirt. You can 
we had it stuck up in the light before to <laughs> test the audio. You can, well, we've got it on the table here in our little Joby tripod. Yeah, there's just a million ways you can use this thing. Mm. Um, and the audio you get from it's really surprisingly good. good. Yeah, so that's been a really good purchase for mm-hmm. us. And mm. now one other thing that we don't actually have in our camera bag because it doesn't fit uh, is the gimbal. Do you want to touch on that? Oh, one? yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll touch on the gimbal. Let's see, find it first. All right. So here we have our DJI Ronin S. So this is our DJI Ronin S. Um, we got this just before the Ronin SC came out, which is probably what I would have rather because it's a little bit smaller. This is a big gimbal. It can take quite a payload, but these things are unreal. That unreal film tool. Uh, would I recommend it for people, amateurs, travellers? Probably not. It's big, it's bulky. When you're carrying it around, you've really got to commit to it. When I get the A7 III out with the wide angle, throw it on this gimbal and walk around with it. And, you know, after all the effort, you're carrying it around all day and you're doing everything, you finally look at the footage and it's awesome. It really is cool. Um, we definitely don't use it enough. Like, we can get a lot more out of it. So I really, really can do some films where... Uh, we use it a bit more, um, take advantage of it. But as a convenience piece, not particularly convenient. If you want stable footage, either stand still or put your camera down on a tripod. <laughs> That's the easiest way. You know, you can use it as a little crane up and down, obviously getting nice movement in shots, time lapses as well. Mm. We're starting to do a few time lapses with it and get a bit of movement in our time lapses. So yeah, really cool tool. Cool. So, on to editing, how we edit our videos that we take for you guys. So, we've actually got two laptops, both MacBook Pros. Mm -hmm. I've got the 15 inch, it's a bit older. Holly has 16 inch, which is a bit newer. (sighs) Look, I don't, I like PCs, but I don't know. I just, editing on Macs, I just, they just seem to crash less. (laughs) They just seem to, yeah, just be a little less temperamental in PCs. Um, We edit on, uh, all Adobe software, so we pay for a subscription. So it's pretty. It's uh, it's pretty expensive. It's seventy. Yeah. It's about seventy seven dollars a month for yeah. everything that we. So yeah. So it's expensive, but mm. you get the updates. Um, you get the updated program constantly. You get the whole suite. So we use Photoshop and Lightroom for our photos, primarily and Lightroom. Yeah, yeah, and thumbnails. So that's what we do with sort of all our photos and everything with. Mm-hmm. Premiere Pro for editing videos. It's a very in-depth program. We're very much amateurs. We're starting mm-hmm. to sort of figure it out a little bit more. Yeah, there's always more to learn. What else? Illustrator for a few of our things, mm-hmm. logos, things like that. So yeah, we use the whole suite, but I mean, they're just, they are really nice laptops to use. And yes, yeah, definitely sped up our workflow. Yes, definitely. One. Yeah, we started off with a Microsoft um, surface, mm. which was fine, but again, it got to the point where it wasn't handling, um, especially the, especially Premiere Pro editing. Mm. So it was constantly crashing. So that's why we upgraded to get another MacBook. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just faster. It, yeah. A lot of people tell me to use Final Cut Pro as well on Mac, mm. and I've, I've heard it's a great program. It's just that I already pay for Premiere Pro. I'm already used to it, so I'm just going to keep using that, even though it's not optimized for a Mac. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are we? I suppose wish list we could move on to. Mm. So wish list. It's a big list. <laughs> <laughs> it always um, is, I think, though. Yeah. And it just ever growing. <laughs> There we go, in camera gear, it's not cheap. As I said before, I'm really happy with the 6400 and the setup. We don't really want to improve or get any more lenses for that. It's fine, just does everything. But we want to get a few more lenses for the Sony a7 III. I would love to get a zoom lens. So we're looking at the Tamron 70 to 180 2.8, which is just about to come out. I want to get some more wildlife photos for you guys. I want to get nice cropped in landscapes, all those things you can do with a nice zoom lens. And I want to get a nice prime. I'm thinking the 85 1.8 from Sony, not the Zeiss Batis, just the the standard one. Apparently it's fine just to get a bit sharp images with um, our prime lens. Um, As I said before, the 50 mil, uh, it's not too sharp. What else is in our wish list? Mavic Pro 2? Yeah. Yeah. Or 3, depending. Yeah, or 3, whatever (laughs) whatever comes out. Just a new drone. We want to upgrade this mic as well. Yeah. Because the audio, as Matt said before, the audio is okay on it, but... Um, if we got a better quality, we would have better audio. Mm. I think that's all for the minute. Yeah, Is it? It's a big wish list, but yeah. Well, I guess we'll show you our vlogging setup. Yep. Just with this and what it usually looks like. And we'll also maybe just let you know, so when we started off with these two cameras, we used 
our A camera, the A7 III, for primarily our B-roll camera. Um, so the 6400 was our vlogging camera, but we've decided to change them over just because the A7 III is that much better. We decided we might as well use it all the time. Yeah. We'll see how we go in the future. We might mm. just sort of swap it back so the 6400 is our main vlog camera and then the a7 III with my selection of lenses with the zoom and then the ultra wide and even the prime we'll be able to get some really good b-roll um and sort of swap it out with that so this will be our primarily our vlogging camera that's just always good to go for vlogging and this is great video and photos and getting that cool b-roll mm -hmm. We decided to get this one as well because when we had the A6400, we were loving it, but we were just finding that we were just struggling with taking photos, videos, um, all in the one camera. It was sucking the juice up pretty quickly and you're sort of changing settings constantly and you'd sort of, you know, you change it to 120 frames a second mm. and you'd get to change it back to 24 for vlogging, you know, because you were doing B-roll with it and then you sort of change all the settings for your photos and... It was just sort of getting a bit much with the one little camera. So yeah, that's why we upgraded and got this great combo with both of them. Very mm -hmm. interchangeable with the footage. Really like as good as this is, um, when you change over 6400, it holds up pretty well. Like mm -hmm. feature wise, it holds up very well to the A7 III. So it's a great little B camera to have. So this is typically what our vlog setup looks like. It's kind of a uh, interesting walking through crowds of people or other mm -hmm. people around. You've got this bloody thing pointing at your face, feel like a bit of an idiot. But uh, yeah, this is generally what it looks like. So it's on our Joby tripod. You've seen these things, little gorilla pods. You can move it around, place it down, stick it anywhere, blah, 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 do all that kind of thing. Yeah, it's good to hold on to. Gives us something to hold on to and vlog with. That's just filming. <laughs> so yeah, it's just simple setup. You need something to sort of be able to hold on to while you're vlogging. So when you're out there, it's fairly stable. You can stay nice and still. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we'll also just quickly mention that we do have a tripod obviously the camera's on it at the moment um but yeah it's nothing fancy just a <sighs> nothing fancy regular tripod actually i accidentally stole it <laughs> <laughs> no in school my i had a photography assignment and i took it home on the weekend and then i put it in my cupboard and i literally completely forgot about it and i found it like a year and a half later when i finished school and i was like oh whoopsie daisy <laughs> Thanks, St. Greg's Campbelltown. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Anyway, yeah, it's nothing fancy. I wouldn't mind upgrading mm. uh, one day to something that's a bit better to travel with. I really want to use tripod a bit more to get some nice static shots and sort of taking advantage of them. I don't use it enough. Mm. Uh, all right. Sorry, it's a little bit all over shop that video, but um, yeah, hope you hope you enjoyed it. I hope you gave you a few ideas and yeah, just seeing how we how we shoot and what we use. Um, if you want to see exactly sort of, I don't know, I might go more in depth about how we use it, how to get, how we get the most out of it, what I'll recommend for you to get first if you're an amateur, all those kind of things. We'll do that in a whole other video because um, that'll be a bit long-winded, I think, instead of just be me talking a lot. So yeah, if you want to sort of see how to use all the gear, jump onto that. But yeah, if you're new here, give us a like, subscribe. Hit the bell, that's what everyone says. <laughs> and yeah, hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Cheers. See ya.